Hi everyone, welcome to Mains Maxima program. So this session consists of a set of questions exclusive in the topic agriculture. So to begin with guys, the first question is, in the recent budget, government announced a hike of MSP, that is the minimum support price, over 1.5 times the cost of unannounced tariff crops. Now, you're going to critically evaluate the rationale behind this particular decision. So what is the key word here guys? The key word is criti critically evaluate, which means that you have to approach this particular question by making sure that you start with the introduction, you put the pros and cons, that is what are the issues or challenges with respect to MSP and also what could be the possible suggestions or remedies or the steps that can be taken in order to solve this problem. So these, this is structure in which you should give your answer and finally we'll wind up with a conclusion. So to begin with guys, here in this question we are going to talk about with respect to minimum support price that is in the recent government budget they announced a hike for MSP. Okay, so now we're going to critically analyze this particular statement. Okay, so now you can start the introduction as we know that agriculture it employs more than half of the population, right? And now our economy is an economy where mo more than 50% of population and as far as your recent data, I can tell you exactly it is like 49.8% uh, of people is involved in agriculture. And we know that agriculture is the backbone of Indian economy. When such is the situation, guys, there should be an effort in order to double or increase the income of farmers. And one such way is what your MSP, that is minimum support price. And what is this MSP, guys? Minimum support price is a price at which the government can purchase the crops from farmers, whatever the price may be. And this minimum support price, guys, that is considered as one of the most important, uh, you know, policy, agriculture policy, okay, part of India's agriculture policy, I can tell you. So in this answer, you can start by giving the importance of agriculture and also directly moving on to the question, in order to increase or in an effort to double the farmer's income, guys, and also to address the distress that has been faced by farmers, some things has to be done and one such effort is taken uh, with respect to the MSP that is minimum support price. So now the budget focused on many agri related interventions guys and out of that one of the most important decisions has been with respect to increasing your minimum support price. Okay now we're going to see guys how can we increase the farm cost that is now the first point is the cost of farm inputs that have increased at a higher rate than the price of produce and now the second point is the credit repayment and also the risk bearing capacities of farmers they have been literally declining or i can say it is reducing why because of failure of crops then the demand supply pressures you can give an introduction by stating the issues as well as the advantage of msp just to uh, you know give a highlight on the topic and now another point is the bumper or the poorer crops guys okay and also the fluctuations they have only helped the middlemen and traders with farmers having to bear with uncertainties which means that when there is a bumper or when there is a poor crop guys when certain fluctuations take place automatically here again the first people who are getting affected is the farmers no sort of benefit is going to them again who is suffering here the farmers so something has to be done guys so that is the reason the government uh, focused on increasing your MSP okay and next point is the recovery of cost let alone profits itself is becoming highly improbable for the farmers guys and now what happens when such a situation guys it has literally led to an increased number of farmer suicide and we know that farmer suicide is one of the most important threat our country is facing and even currently also if you see in the state of Maharashtra the place is called Vidarbha and Matwada they ranks number one with respect to the number of people who are suiciding that is the farmers both your male and female, uh, female, female farmers okay and now when that is the situation guys what happens it is again leading to a lower productivity it is uh, showing the growth of development or the development is showing a downward trend right and now thus MSP guys there is a minimum support price is one intervention in order to ensure a minimum price for the produce and also to mitigate the risk of uncertainties ensuring them against any steep price fall that is them is your farmers here so now the CACP recommends the MSP which is decided we know that the government of India they'll uh, decide the MSP prices but on the base of recommendations given by the CACP, that is your Commission for Agriculture Cost and Prices, based on the recommendation given by them only, you will be fixing your MSP, that is your minimum support prices, okay? And now we are going to see why should there be a hike or increase in your minimum support price, guys. That is very important. That is what your question is dealing with, right? Now, the first point is the government has decided to keep the MSP for all the unannounced crops of 
care of at least you know by one and half times of the production cost that is your 50 percent over and above the cost of production the government has literally decided that why because this decision guys it literally proved to be one of the most important or a significant step in doubling the income of farmers because initially in our introduction also we said why is this msp guys this minimum support price is to help the farmers to earn a better income and now why a more focus is given in order to increase his msp again is to is to double the income of farmers guys because literally we know that the kind of threat they are facing with reference to your agriculture and other sectors so now in order to make sure those farmers are having some sort of income and the able to and we are able to bring them from the you know situation of poverty the government should do something that is why again this msb is taken as an important step in order to double the income of the farmers and now this will also reinvigorate financial business of the state cooperative banks then your district cooperative banks and also your rrb that is regional rural banks okay now now we're going to talk about the issues guys so far we have said what is msp then what could be the advantage of increasing the msp right now since it is critically evaluate or examine we have to talk about the challenges or the issues concerned with this particular msp that is the minimum support price what are the issues guys the first point is the concern over the methodology that is a method to calculate it guys so some economists uh, they have developed three aggregates in order to calculate or uh, you know your msp now the first one is a2 which means it includes the actual cost guys the second one is a2 plus fl which means it includes the actual cost plus also the family cost that is the family labor and third one that is your c2 it consists of a2 plus fl plus rent plus capital interest that is it consists of the actual cost plus your family uh, labor plus two additional factors one is the cost involved in rent and also the capital interest so from this you could understand that c2 is having a wider access right so now there is a confusion guys over what parameter has been put to rest by the government stating that msp will be based on this a2 plus fl actually if you see a2 and fl guys it consists of only your actual cost and family labor but whereas the c2 is a comprehensive it's a little more wider right it consists of all these uh, you know other methodologies so that is the confusion that exists guys now this c2 has to be taken into consideration why because c2 is more than 50 percent of the a2 plus f1 that is the actual cost and uh, family labor why because c2 consists of a2 plus 5 and also it consists of what the rent as well as your capital interest so that has to be given you know more importance guys okay and this significant difference guys it makes the cost of production much much higher than the level on which the msp calculation is made so this is one of the most important uh, you know issue that you can write with reference to your minimum support price and the next point is see most of the farmers guys they don't do not have access to msp itself that is very you know it is very understandable also some farmers don't even know what is the concept called msp that is minimum support price what what are they supposed to do under this how are they going to get benefit which shows that there is a lack of awareness with reference to your msp among the farmers so that is the next point that you can explain guys another point is that there is also no provision guys in the budget to increase the ambit of farmers who are covered by msp see now some farmers will be covered under the program called minimum support price but now in that also the coverage is not proper that is why it is said that there is no provision in the budget to increase the ambit of farmers who are covered by msp that is your minimum support price and also that is a problem in addition to how the msp is calculated see all these are again another issues guys which you can mention and now another point is the differentiation guys with reference to the carif and rabi crops okay in administrating a price uh, it leave only a few crops covered in the msp which literally means that your fruits and vegetables are not covered see agriculture means what it is not only with reference to your carif crops or rabi crops alone right you do have other crops also what about your fruits and vegetables that is not at all covered under this particular program again there are farmers who deals on that also now they are at a loss are they getting any benefit no so what the, it, it says that this should also be covered guys that is what they are trying to tell here you can also mention that particular issue the next point that you can talk here is the msp and inflation guys they are highly correlated that means there is a relationship between the rise in uh, price of the products and also inflation that is when there is an increase in your minimum support price what happens automatically it will result in a into a price hike of many agriculture products here comes your inflation and what sort of inflation guys it is it can be termed as qeflation a disqueflation is a type of inflation where when there is a rise in price of food food products exclusively when the price of uh, food increases whereas the non price for food items the price of non food items they remain relatively stable the more focus will be given on what 
when there is a rise in your price of food items okay you can even mention that point here guys because when there is a price in agriculture commodities automatically again because of inflation it uh, goes up and again it is a problem for the farmers to get the price what they really deserve okay and now so now we've discussed what are the issues with respect to this minimum support price so now it is time for us to discuss what steps could be taken in order to make sure that this hike or increase in the minimum support price is literally benefiting your farmers in the true sense so the next heading could be the step needed for MSP hike to benefit the farmers. So the first point that you can write here is the MS Swamindan report. And who is MS Swamindan? We know he's the father of uh, Indian Green Revolution, right? So now according to the report given by him, he suggested MSP over C2. That is your, which consists of your actual cost plus your farm la uh, farm, uh, family labor plus your rent and also your capital interest. So that is what he suggested. And now, Thus, the government need to base your MSP, guys, there is a minimum support price on this, then it will definitely or literally help the farmers to increase their profit. That is one such step that you can take in order to have an increase or a hike in your MSP, thereby benefiting the farmers. The second step could be a hike in MSP that should be supplemented with what? With irrigation and reduction fertilizer cost. And we know that as far as Indian agriculture is concerned, when you compare Indian agriculture to world agriculture, with respect to irrigation, India ranks number one. So what we should be able to make sure that we are utilizing it in the best way, right? So now, uh, that's, that is why they said that a hike in uh, MSP should be, you know, supplemented with your irrigation and also a reduction in the fertilizer cost. Because the cost of fertilizer increases, it will be difficult for the farmers to purchase that because they don't have that much of money to spend on it, right? That is yet again another important point that you can mention. The third point is, so now there is a need to be reforms in the APMC, that is your Agriculture Produce Marketing Committees, in order to ensure the farmers selling directly to the market. That also should be done, guys, because when there are middlemen, here we are talking about the middlemen. When there are middlemen, what happened, guys? Literally, the farmer is at loss because they do a lot of fraudries. They don't uh, literally cheat the farmers. So that is why they said that as per your APMZ Act, they should be ensured that the farmers are selling directly to the market. A provision should be made for that. A reform should be done with respect to that factor also. That is yet again another important way in which you can, you know, increase or hike MSP so as to benefit your farmers. Another point is, the high input cost and low output price is what plagues the sector. We know that because the input with reference to your raw materials, with reference to your fertilizers, what you're buying out to be too high. But at the end of the day, when the output is coming or when the produce is coming, you are paid less. Means the farmer is paid less. So what happens? The farmer is, is at loss. So now this has to be changed again with adequate reforms. We know that there exists a lot of reforms, there exists a lot of rules and regulations, but it has not been you know, effectively implemented, guys. Make sure that all these are revised thoroughly or monitored thoroughly, thereby it is benefiting the farmer to the most beneficial way. That is what you should do, right? So these are some of the steps that can be taken in order to ensure that with the hike in your minimum support price, literally it will benefit the farmer to the fullest, okay? Apart from this, guys, another point is that the government decision to develop and upgrade the existing 22,000 rural hats into the program called the Graman Agriculture Market, that is your grams, literally it will allow greater access to better prices for the farmers. That is yet again another important step that can be taken, guys. And the next point that you can mention here is the operation greens with respect to the perishable vegetables. That is a step in the right direction. That is, can also be taken as a step, guys, with reference to your hike in MSP. Okay. And finally, another important uh, step that can be taken, guys, is, is with respect to the price deficiency payment. That is, what is this price deficiency payment, guys? That is, a proposal has been made, okay, in order to compensate the difference between the government announced price for MSP and also the actual market price, okay, uh, for certain selected crops. And if you see, uh, in case of rice and wheat, this uh, implementation of MSP, it goes continuous because they are the most important crops. Whereas for certain other targeted crops, you can opt this option called as price deficiency payment. By doing so, what can you do guys? It can literally address the gap or the uh, disparity in minimum support price based on procurement of crops. So these are some of the most important steps that can be taken in order to make sure that there is a hike or increase in your minimum support prices so as to benefit the farmers guys. So after that, you can conclude your answer by saying that Agri sector is perhaps facing one of the most important challenges in terms of structural inefficiencies and we all do know that right and for MSP to be a real deal for the farmers guys it has to be complemented by what by certain sufficient or in fact efficient measures 
to reduce your input cost because I told you when the input cost with reference to the fertilizers, chemicals, raw materials, when it is seeds, when it is too high means it will not be affordable for the farmers to get it, right? So now you have to reduce the input cost. Then second point is you can talk about it can strengthen the market linkages and also ease all these log logistics thereby bringing a transparency in the functioning of the APMC which caters much to traders than the farmers. So this is how you can conclude your answer guys with respect to MSP. So I hope you have clearly understood with reference to the recent budget government announcement regarding the hike of MSP. Uh, you have, I, thought, I, I hope you have clearly understood this particular question. The next question is though predominantly based on agriculture, rural economy is much dependent on allied sector and non-agri sectors. Instead of looking at them as silos, we need to treat them as integrated segments to revive the rural economy. You are going to comment on this statement, guys. That is what they are trying to say through this question is, we know that the rural economy depends upon agriculture. Okay, we agree to that. But now, why can't more importance be given in order to integrate the allied as well as non-allied sectors? That is what this question talks about, guys. So how will you answer this question? You are going to talk about agriculture. But more importance is given to the other allied sectors which comes under your agriculture sector. How can employment be increased in all these sectors? You can include all these points in this particular question. So to begin with guys, you can give an introduction as to we know that the country's economic growth, it is not at all justifiable and also equitable unless and until the benefits are reflected in the rural sectors. Why guys? Because we know that uh, the soul of Indian, India, uh, Indian agriculture it lies in its villages. And we know that uh, in the previous lesson also I said Indian agriculture they constitute the backbone of our economy. So now the agri sector if you see they accommodate more than two thirds of rural population. But more than one fifth they have income less than the poverty line. So this itself shows what is the situation right. Now increasing farmers income that is an economic imperative. That also we know in the previous uh, question also we were discussing regarding doubling the farmers income only right. Now the government has announced its intention of doubling the farmers income by 2022 because they are making sure a lot of programs are coming up so they will be able to boost up the income of farmers thereby helping them to come out of the level of line of poverty and also ensure that they to have a decent standard of living. Now for this what do you need guys that is in order to double the income of farmers what do you need literally you have to improve your farm productivity and for that there needs to be an increased focus on agriculture allied sectors if you want to improve overall rural income because rural income consists of not only agriculture income guys also you have certain sectors like your allied sectors and non-agri sectors right you have to focus on that also only then the overall rural economy you can think of increasing the income of the overall rural economy so that is how you should put your introduction guys and now in this answer we are going to see uh, with reference to the uh, sectors other than agriculture that is your non-allied sectors how in each of these sectors how can the rural economy benefit from each of these sectors guys so now how can you do this this can be achieved by reducing the over dependence of rural population on agriculture as a source of income they have to start focusing on other areas as well so now we are going to see how are they going to focus on other sectors the first such sector is your livestock sector we know that India has a mixed crop livestock farming system with livestock becoming an important secondary source of income. And now, especially the small and the marginal and also the women farmers, they have high dependence on livestock sector, right? Now, this livestock, livestock sector, it contributes around 4% to India's GDP, that is your gross domestic product. So now more focus can be given on this also now, guys, because I told you the small and the marginal and also the women farmers most of these farmers are focused on this or depend on this livestock sector. So if more importance is given in developing this particular sector means they will be able to earn a lot of income as a result of which the entire rural economy can develop, right? That is what through the under this life, livestock sector you have to mention. And hence measures to boost your livestock sector growth and productivity will have a significant impact in elevating the rural distress means in removing the distress that is existing in the rural sector. So you can make sure that more schemes or more effort has been taken in order to develop the livestock sector. Thereby, an income has been generated. That is what you should put in that particular point. And what is the next sector, guys? The next sector is your dairy sector, which means that we know that India is the largest dairy sector in the world and nearly 80%, guys, 80% of India's milk production is contributed by small and marginal farmers. And we also know that India ranks number one with reference to world agriculture for your milk production, right? So in that case, what you should do? You have to make sure that again more focus is given on this particular sector and if you see guys the milk procurement okay that is an important source of secondary income for over 80 to 90 million milk producers 
thereby signifying its role in order to enhance or increase rural income and employment. So now more importance should be given to this particular dairy sector guys. Okay. And again if you see guys, the National Google Mission and National Mission on Women Productivity, they are some of the important programs which was introduced by the government in order to improve your dairy sector. And along with that if you see the Operation Flood which was given by Vargis Kurian in order to increase the productivity in a dairy sector using cooperative methods literally that has succeeded in increasing the income of rural household. So it literally shows that there should be more focus in improving the dairy sector so that more of income will be generated in rural areas and also employment. And another sector is the fishery sector guys that can also provide alternative employment to the farmers. You can also mention about fishery sectors because by using the pond uh, for the farmers in order to make sure that more of fish cultivation has been done it is a kind of source of income for the farmers right whereby at the end of the day the rural income uh, economy's income will increase another sector is sericulture and thus this sericulture guys it empowers the rural women and also provide excellent self-employment opportunities especially to the educated youth including women from the rural community especially since organic practices are catching up and you know that now there is a huge demand for organic products right so in that case sericulture really holds a Upper, upper place whereby that too the women are getting more employment opportunity in this guys as a result of which again in rural sectors the income will increase and also the employment of rural women also increases you can even add this particular point also another point is with reference to your horticulture that is the fruits and vegetables they provide more income than food grains we do know that and in the previous question when we were discussing regarding MSP that is one of the issue that was uh, covered in that because food uh, fruits and vegetables is not covered but in this particular question if you are going to encourage horticulture, that is your fruits and vegetables, which provide more income, uh, uh, income is being focused means automatically again what happens, the rural, uh, rural economy's income increases, thereby diversifying towards higher value added crops can augment farmers income. You can even mention about it guys. And now moving on to the non-agriculture sectors in rural India guys. Talking about that, if you see, the first point is the share of agriculture in rural output, that is literally 39%. Whereas the rest is what? That is 60% is contributed by whom? By the manufacturing, construction and service sector. Okay. Now if you see with respect to the construction sector, the rural output, if you see there has been a substantial growth in employment in this particular construction sector, especially in which area? In rural areas. Because it remains in a low paying sector. You need not pay more, higher income to the people in rural areas. Just like for example, if a construction works goes in urban areas, you do have to pay a little higher income than the people in rural areas. In such a situation, because of that uh, you know, low income category, there has been a substantial growth in employment in this particular construction sector. But here, you should literally increase the income. In respect to the people doing in the, from the rural economy is coming and doing, you should literally provide them an income which is a little higher. You have to also mention that point. Okay. Another important sector is your manufacturing sector. So now, the manufacturing sector in rural India, guys, it literally contributes 18% to rural output, but it employs only 8% of rural workforce, guys, which literally shows that a more of employment is required there, right? And now, the rural workforce, guys, they find it very difficult to get absorbed in the manufacturing sector. Why? Because most of the rural people, they are mostly unskilled. Can't even call them semi-skilled also. In manufacturing sector, you need at least some sort of skill. They should be at least semi-skilled. That is the reason they find it very difficult to get absorbed in the manufacturing sector. One, one such reason is that, okay. The next sector is the service sector. If you see the service sector growth in rural areas, they, they could also play a critical role in improving the rural income. Sectors like your transport, then storage, they have literally recorded a reasonable growth in rural area. And if you see the contribution, the service sector contributes around 27% to rural output as against around like 55% to India's GDP which literally shows that majority of contribution to India's GDP comes from your service sector and with reference to your rural output if you can see it is 27 percentage which means that more focus should be given in developing the service sector with reference to your rural economy okay and now the sectors like food processing guys then warehousing and logistics that will be very beneficial why because it literally help push a farmer's income, that is increase your farmer's income and also reduce the wastage of certain perishable agriculture commodities and also provide employment to whom? To the rural workers. And if you see certain schemes like Sampada scheme, they need to be implemented very effectively. So these are the points that you can write under your service sector. So why I said about the you know industrial manufacturing sector, then your service sector is because these are non-agriculture sectors. Because in the question we are talking about what? Improving the entire rural economy's 
income so which consists of apart from agriculture you have your allied sectors and also you have non agri sector also that is how can you make use of all these non agri uh, agriculture sector also to boost up the income so as to have a overall development of a rural economy that is why we mentioning about all these sectors okay finally you can wind up your answer by concluding that the villages are india's backbone as i told you initially also contributing around 46% of the country's net domestic product and thereby employing 70% of total workforce so now a multi pronged approach focusing on different sectors in a very holistic manner is needed guys in order to augment the income levels of farmers which means to increase the income of farmers a holistic approach is very very essential in fact i can say it is a need of the r thus a suitable push needs to be given in order to agri allied sectors and also for infrastructure development and also for industrial and also service sector growth with reference to your rural areas all these we are talking with reference to rural areas because we know that majority of population still depends on rural areas in such a situation let all these sectors be simultaneously developed in your rural area thereby making sure that employment is increased then as a result of which income of the farmers and the uh, rural people increase as a whole the entire rural area gets developed so this is how you should approach this particular question the next question is climate change impacts agriculture the most discuss the ways to mitigate risk and make agriculture resilient to extreme weather events so here we are going to discuss about the topic agriculture with reference to the climate change because this is very very important if you see in your economic survey you can see an entire chapter exclusively with reference to your climate change in agriculture okay so to begin with guys the introduction you can write if you see climate change has literally increased the frequency of extreme weather events such as droughts floods and storm and that is the most challenging issue of our age we do know that right and now when there is a severity of floods and storms guys what happens to our uh, economy as a whole literally it gets shattered with reference to agriculture productivity because it is having a direct impact on agriculture also we are going to discuss about that particular uh, topic today so now when there is a severity of floods and storm guys over the past 30 years it has literally put the agriculture sectors of many developing countries including india at the risk of growing food insecurity we know that when there is food insecurity what happens we are not self sufficient and as the population is increasing in alarming rate you need to provide food for that growing population but when this is a situation automatically there arises the issue of food insecurity okay you can mention that point in the introduction and now agriculture is not only sensitive to climate change guys but also one of the major drivers for climate change i could tell you and now if you see around 41% of ghe that is a greenhouse gases it they come from agriculture especially when a huge population in india is dependent on this particular sector called agriculture climate change has a huge or a greater impact in the primary segment of the economy because based on the climatic change if there is extreme situation of flood or if there is extreme situation of drought what happens it leads to lower productivity in agriculture right at the end of the day what happens when there is a lower productivity in agriculture it is again affecting your economy it is again affecting your gdp right fine now we are going to see what are the impact of this particular climate change with reference to agriculture sector okay the first point is the climate sensitivity of agriculture is uncertain as there is you know regional variation in rainfall then your temperature also the crops and cropping systems also with reference to soil and management practices when there are certain variations in res with respect to all these factors automatically there will be a lot of changes in your climate which literally affects your agriculture that is one of the impact effect of climate change on agriculture the second point that you can mention here is the food production in india that is sensitive to climate change why because such a variability with reference to your monsoon rainfall and temperature changes within a season that again is affecting your food production right now agriculture productivity is sensitive to two broad classes of climate induced effect guys that is we are going to see in a broader sense when you talk about sensitivity in agriculture productivity we have to make it we have to be more specific right so we are going to talk about the direct effects and also the indirect effects that is why it is said that it has been sensitive to two broad classes of climate induced effects so the first one is a direct effect that is when there is a direct effect from changes in temperature and also the precip per precipitation or carbon dioxide concentrations and if you see the indirect effect guys that is how how does it take place it takes place through changes in soil moisture and also the distribution and frequency of infestation by pests and diseases okay this is to, just to make sure that the sensitive in, sensitivity in agriculture productivity how it has been literally affecting with reference to your climate change so we can mention those two points then now we'll be thinking that when there's a small change in temperature or rainfall how far that is going to have an impact on our uh, crops guys definitely even that small or minor change can lead to a lot of impact with reference to your food crops that is 
the small change in temperature and rainfall they do have a significant effect on the quantity quality of fruits vegetables and food crops because at the end of the day in the market it is not about the quantity that you supply it is about the quality food crops or the quality fruits and vegetables that you supply for that again the climate climate should support with reference to agriculture okay you can mention that point another point that you can mention is the pathogens and insect population they are strongly depend upon what the temperature and humidity when there is a change in these parameters what happened guys it will literally change their population dynamics that also you can mention here because we know that these pathogens insect population they are literally important with respect to agriculture again right and now apart from this guys the other impacts on agriculture and also your related sectors they include lower yields or income from your dairy cattle and also when there is a decline in your fish breeding migration also harvest that point also you should mention because when you're talking about agriculture see we do get income from agriculture but this climate change also has a effect on the other allied and non allied sectors also so you have to mention that point also and next point is that the extreme rainfall that shocks lead to reduction in yield guys now what happens these losses they could increase significantly in the coming years why because the warming level reaches 1.5 degrees celsius and as per the global reports if you see that they indicate a loss of 10 to 40 percent in crop productivity by the year 2100 so this literally shows that it's, it's again when there is a loss in your crop production what happens automatically agriculture fails and that too one of the major reason is climate change because of that believe this is happening so we have to do a lot more in order to make sure that this is not happening now if you see the economic survey of 2018 guys they found out that the effect of extreme temperature shocks in productivity in unirrigated areas it accounts for more than half of our agricultural land and that is literally significant also okay you can even mention that point and also when there's an extreme temperature shock especially in these unirrigated areas what happens it will reduce the yield by 7% for carif and also by 6 7.6% for rabi crops and we know that carif and rabi crops they form an important part of our agricultural productivity right when there is a reduction in that again what happens automatically there will be low productivity in agriculture which is again a big threat to the entire agriculture sector so these are the most important impacts or effects of climate change with respect to agriculture and also make sure that you are mentioning uh, about your allied and also non agricultural sector in one point guys to show that climate changes do have effect in this areas also okay and now we are going to talk about the adoption or the mitigation uh, measures guys because that is what the question is asking you right so now moving on to the adaptation and mitigation measures guys adaptation in the context of climate change we're going to talk here okay that comprises what the measures which is taken in order to minimize the adverse or the negative effects of what your climate change that is what we are going to talk here and now what is mitigation the mitigation comprises the measures in order to reduce the emissions of greenhouse gases that literally causes or leads to climate change in the first place so this is how we are going to categorize okay so now the first point that you can mention here is the first point that you can mention is about the paris agreement and if you see here guys india has voluntarily given certain measures okay uh, under this paris agreement in order to uh, in order to mitigate your climate change and now india's indented contributions earned a lot of international praise guys for its ambitious contributions including the large investments in your renewable energy and also with ref reference to afforestation and also a plan to cut emission intensity of productive activity you can just mention about that the next point that you can mention here is guys india has in place a detailed policy also a lot of rules and regulations with re reference to your ghg mitigation that is greenhouse gas mitigation guys you can also mention that point okay and now an even more proactive approach through national action plan on climate change has been there guys because if you see before also with reference to your national action plan on climate change guys lot of measures and actions were taken but it is only after the paris agreement that a proactive or a very efficient actions or plans were taken under this particular napcc and now under this napcc guys india also has a national mission for sustainable agriculture it's a sub mission of your uh, napcc and what is the aim of that in order to make agriculture more sustainable because when there is sustainability that is you are using for the present generation and also making sure that there is availability for the future generations you have to make sure that this mitigation has been done with respect to sustainability so that we'll be able to make sure that such kind of severe climatic changes or climatic hazards can be prevented so this is uh, this is one of the mitigation points that you can mention here and moving on to the next one the national clean energy fund that is your ncef they play a very big role in mitigating climate change in the country but this national clean energy fund guys 
they have financed through a cess on coal consumption which has been diverted in order to compensate states for losses incurred due to gst that is also there guys because of which uh, this national clean energy fund couldn't you know effectively play a bigger role so now the government should make sure that certain things are been undertaken in order to make sure that this particular uh, disadvantage or criticism has been taken out in, in this particular scheme another mitigation measure is the compensatory afforestation what is afforestation you're, you're, when you are uh, when there's deforestation when cutting down trees when there's a greater extent normally you need to bring back those trees that you can do only by you know planting it more and more saplings right so now this compensatory afforestation guys that is a win 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 solution that is a win for the environment why because a lot of forests they are compensated for and a win for business because these forests literally they can be traded on international carbon markets why because of their value as carbon sink so this is yet again another important mitigation uh, measure that you can take with respect to your climate change guys and now we are going to see certain adaptation and mitigation measures with reference for the farmers see that there should be an awareness on climate change to the farmers guys the farmers need to be sensitized on climate change and also adopt certain safer practices because they do they should be aware okay the temperature or the rainfall they are literally it is going to have a very bad impact on the entire climate whereby it will have a direct impact on their productivity so they should literally be aware to these climate changes okay the second point is the agromet advisory advisories that is through this agromet advisory certain bulletins okay uh, with reference to the as a warning to farmers in order to inform that, that there will be a change in the uh, climate so accordingly they can plan or it is a kind of warning given to them to make sure that certain climate change is going to happen so accordingly they can plan up or accordingly they can start take certain precautions to make sure that such a huge loss or uh, such a sudden loss in agriculture productivity doesn't take place so that is what about the agromet advisory talks about the next point with reference to uh, for the farmers is guys the contingency planning because in certain emergencies like all these extreme weather uh, si uh, changing situations certain contingency planning should be done so that the farmer can take a kind of precaution so then finally you can mention about the demonstration of climate resilient technologies to the farmers so this is how the uh, you know the mitigation measures can be taken with respect to farmers for your climate change guys next we are going to talk about the climate smart agriculture that is this climate smart agriculture that should literally create readiness to deal with what your extreme weather conditions and also when there are certain weather uncertainties okay and now every climate smart farmer guys they would incorporate practices like your farm ponds buntings trenching mulching and also certain other practices which are literally for conservation of soil moisture all these things are very important right because it is having a direct impact on your climate again and now next point that you can mention here is under your uh, climate smart agriculture is that appropriate seeds and on farm inputs that is in order to avoid certain in depth situations that have to have a better access and also there should be a control over the required water resources we know that water is a very precious resource and now literally the access to even safe drinking water is very less so now a proper control on this also should be done guys so these are some of the adaptation and mitigation measures that can be taken in order to make sure that we are able to deal with this climate change especially with reference to agriculture okay now you can conclude your answer guys by saying that this climate change that could reduce the annual agriculture income up to 20% 20 to 25% for unirrigated areas and and this is given by the economic survey guys and if you see minimizing sus susceptibility to climate change what does it require it requires drastically extending irrigation how through a def uh, efficient drip and sprinkle technology we know that we do have drip irrigation we do have sprinkle technology we should make sure that all these things are utilized in the best possible way we can include all these points in your conclusion another point that you can include in your conclusion is that thus agriculture will play a very crucial role in addressing the planet's future challenge and is also key in providing you know adaptation also mitigation synergies so this is how we can conclude your answers so i hope you've clearly understood the impact of climate change with reference to agriculture and what can be done what mitigation measures could be taken in order to ensure that such a kind of climate change could be you know we could prevent it or certain precautions could be done in order to make sure that the effect is not that drastic okay so with this we have come to the end of the session exclusively on agriculture and i hope you've clearly understood what we have discussed here with reference to your mains maxima program thank you